Hello friends, I'm back again. I've been away for a while. I'm sorry and sorry for the squeaky chair. Um, it's been a, a long road, uh, but I'm back again to share some uh, new journals that I finished. This, these are all um, my corrugated cardboard uh, journals. So I thought I would share some flip throughs of the finished product and uh, let's get to it. So I'll start with this one. This is actually the one I just finished. Um, so it's got some beautiful yellow sari silk on the front and uh, it just ties around. You can tie it in a couple of ways. You can tie it the way I've tied it here. I've taken one, one end this way and one end this way to bring it around and tie as a bow. Or if you wanted to just bring both ends around, you could do that and then just tuck the string around to hold it shut like that. Um, I've tried to give them a, a good, a decent amount of expansion room. So hopefully, hopefully they've got enough. Um, there's, I'll just pull this out of the side here, off the side. So on the front here, there's just some uh, new uh, lace, like crocheted lace and a little twig from my front yard that I've just tied on with um, some burlap string. And on the front cover here, this gorgeous owl, I've just put some um, dyed cheesecloth, tea dyed cheesecloth behind just for a bit of texture and then just framed it in this, again, it's new crocheted uh, ribbon, probably just done on a machine and uh, this fun little leaf trim. Uh, this whole kit that I've used is uh, from Louisa Heinzel. I'm not sure of the name of the kit, but I've used it several times. I really, really love the art in this particular kit. So I'll go right on inside. So here um, you'll see I've used a time card and this is one of the uh, pieces in the kit that I'm sure could be used as a bookmark or a belly band. I've decided to use it as an extra long tuck spot because I love to do that. And there's a, a journaling card that I've just tucked in. And here are a few tags, one with an owl, one with a, I think a goldfinch there and just a little double piece of lined paper and this gorgeous bird that I fussy cut I was actually going to put in the journal somewhere but ended up not using it so I've just decided to tuck it in so whoever decides to adopt the journal has some things to decorate with and the tags are just white um, and uh, um, inked around the edges with some nice vintage twine Top, tops there. This is a paper bag that I've just sewn along the edges here. You might not be able to see the stitches um, because it's, I'll bring it a little closer to the camera. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them still. Uh, I've done it in sort of a grayish color so it kind of fades into the background and it is just stitched on both sides uh, but you can still fit some little goodies in there. Uh, the back side I've just left blank so you can write on it or decorate, mount some photos, some music paper, one of the pages from the kit that I've just sewn some tea stain paper onto the back. And here's a cute little um, page from a children's book that was about um, rescuing some robins, which I thought was really cute. Um, I can never remember, I can never say the word of this, <laughs> the name of this paper. I call it green paper. <laughs> I'll think of it, ledger paper, there we go. And some vintage white paper. Uh, more tea stain paper and I've just cut some of that trim that you saw on the front cover um, and just glued it to the edge there. This is, oh my gosh, this is my favorite. I know this sounds ridiculous, but this is, oh, sorry, I jiggled the camera. I apologize. This uh, is actually some of my favorite paper in the whole world because of the gorgeous crinkly sound and it's got this great thin texture and it's Amazon packing paper. It comes in the Amazon packages and I'm obsessed with it. I don't know why. It's just because it's so lovely and thin and it has a gorgeous sound to it. I'm a little strange when it comes to paper. <laughs> I've loved it all my life. Uh, here's a cute little bingo card from the kit and um, a little tag and another little square journaling card. Again, both are just blank on the back for you to journal or doodle or paint. Some uh, children's uh, writing paper to practice their alphabet and to practice writing. So some um, writing pages there, another page from the kit. All of the pages that I've used in the kit, I've backed with tea stained paper. Uh, some vintage 
um, writing paper, like for, um, what do you call it, stationery. Yeah, they don't really sell stationery too much in North America uh, anymore. I used to collect stationery kits and I can't, I can't seem to find them anymore. Uh, this is uh, from a gardening book. Here's a cute little um, uh, Wendy, Wendy's Journal Adventures. Um, she, I think, came up with this idea of using um, a circle punch to, to create a pocket or a tuck spot for circular tags, which I absolutely love. And I also really love it because it looks almost like a nest. So the birds are sort of perching in their nest waiting for you to write on them. And that's just a little tag again, blank on the back for a secret little message. There's the center of the first signature. This uh, journal has um, two signatures and tea stained paper. There's the other side of that lovely uh, gardening book and that stationery. Some really funky tea staining happened here. I love when this happens. I just layer paper over top of it itself and pour the tea on. I just love sometimes the designs I get. Cute little bird here. And I've just added some more of that uh, green leaf trim here on some tea stain paper. Some of the Amazon packing paper. Cute little bird. Backed with tea stain paper again. Ledger paper. <laughs> there's the other side of the children's book. And the music paper. And there's the other side of the paper bag. And again, you can see I've sewn around the edge, but I've left the little bottom pocket or the bottom flap open. And I just glued an extra piece of... Um, paper that I had cut uh, just to give it a bit of decoration and inside I've put another piece of lined paper that I've just stamped um, a flower onto and here is a cute little bird here peeking out and another little bird circular bird tag and just peeking out there and the second signature starts with one again one of those beautiful pages by Louisa I just love her art uh, this is a heavier brown paper this is more of um, a wrapping like a package wrapping paper it's quite hefty and thick um, it doesn't love holding glue uh, there are specific glues that it just doesn't really want to hang on to so I would probably use this particular piece for writing or even painting on um, using inks would be good, but for some reason glue just doesn't want to stick to it. A uh, glue stick for sure does not. Um, I think if you use a good enough a good enough amount of um, like I just use the white, excuse me for the squeaky chair, um, Eileen's tacky glue, and you really press down what you want on that. Uh, tape doesn't really like to stick to it either. So just giving you a heads up, that's a bit of a an ornery piece of paper. Some more tea stain paper. Here is a um, library card. Um, gosh, I can't remember what, the, what these would be called. These would be the, the cards that you would search through um, to find the library book that you're looking for. Card catalog. Yes, it's a catalog card. There we go. And I received these from a, a woman in Canada. Um, she was getting rid of a whole bunch of them and they're all music related, which I really love. This one happens to be Handel. Um, and this is the book that you could find blank on the back so you can journal or paint or doodle I've just attached it with two pieces of vintage cotton fabric. I'm almost out of that It's one of my favorite paper uh, fabrics Some more little birds. There's another page from the little rescue Robin <laughs> rescuing Robin um, bird children's story There's that beautiful bird it's the same one that I fussy cut out that was in the front pocket uh, it's the same bird there. Just love it. Some more of that stationery. There's the music paper. Uh, beautiful flower here from that gardening book. Here's the center of the center sig or the second signature rather. So on either side, it has these same birds just sort of peeking back and forth at each other. And I sewed the uh, this beautiful envelope into the center uh, so it can be stuffed with this just has a little tuck spot here and oh I'm so sorry I hit the camera again I'm getting used to this new setup I apologize inside there's some lovely little surprises some little birds some lined paper 
a little bingo card so that you can do some decorating. I'm just going to set those off to the side because I don't want to risk hitting the camera again. And I put some of that same lace trim here. Tea stained paper, some more of that beautiful gardening book. Here's another one of those little round tags in the round tag pocket. Same plain on the back and the little trim is just stapled on. Oops, excuse me, didn't mean to cover the bird. There we are. And on the other side of the catalog card, the library catalog card, I've just taken a shipping tag and um, attached it to the other side. So you've got a neat little flap if you wanted to you know, take something like, I don't have an envelope, but an envelope would be really neat. You could always attach it to that um, and then have it as a flip out, or you could take a piece of paper like this. I wouldn't particularly use this one, but you, you could if you wanted and attach it to here. And then you could have a little flip out and then you could use the other side as well, right? So just fun, fun little ideas, or you could just leave it as it is. Another bingo card pocket with some tags here, two little birds and just a plain little journaling card. Again, they're all blank on the back. Tea stained, that grumpy paper. <laughs> and that's the end of the last signature. And here to match the front, I've done um, the same time card pocket with just some extra little bits inside. Square journaling tag, uh, journaling card tag. There's some of the same color cardstock that I used here. Lined paper. And again, in the back, I've put in another nice long journaling tag or bookmark. You could easily use that as a flip as well. Just so cute peeking out there. And I think if I move this over, you'll be able to see. So I've just left the inside blank, just plain. So if you wanted to decorate it, you could. Uh, this part really needs to remain flexible. So I, that's why I don't like to glue anything on that. You want to have nice flexibility to allow the journal to grow. So if I show you from the top, you can see there's lots of space here for the pages to fill out. And as the pages fill and you need to widen the book, this panel can just move back and allow for more more space so you can get pretty chunky with these ones you can decorate and put in quite a lot that's why i like using this um, cardboard and it just has such a great texture like corrugated cardboard just feels so nice and it's got a nice squishy quality in the hand sorry silk tears and gets everywhere and i just left this was um from this was like the i think one of the top flaps of the packaging and it had this uh, really strong tape on it uh, and it has uh, little threads that come through it and I just decided to leave that on as just a bit of visual interest and so that is my my beautiful birds uh, journal from Louisa Heinzel that's her kit uh, so I'll pop that off to the side here the next one I did uh, this one was a lot of fun this one's been in my mind for a while so again cardboard uh, corrugated cardboard. This one has room, definitely room for expansion, not quite as much as the other one because the piece that I used or the panel I used was a little bit smaller. This one is Gnomes and Mushrooms and again it has the sari silk um, tie that I've just wrapped around from both sides here and so on the front part here, I'll turn it this way so you can see it. I've just put some little fussy cut mushrooms and the word gnomes. This entire kit, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say the entire kit. Um, the wording um, and all of the gnome pictures are from Mrs. Cog's Crafts. And the mushrooms, I'm actually not 100% sure where the mushrooms are from, but the mushrooms are all from the same kit. So if anybody out there knows, you can just write in the comments remind, and remind me who it was. I'll try and go through my files and see if I can remember. Um, gosh, I feel so silly not remembering. Anyways, so I've used lots of uh, tea-stained cheesecloth um, and a little bit of that Amazon packaging um, just to add some more visual interest. There are a lot of um, gnomes that have uh, spider webs or spiders around them so it kind of the cheesecloth made me think of that. And then the front picture is just the most adorable. Oh here uh, and this is the artist that um, uh, Heinrich Schlitt I believe is how it would be pronounced. Uh, he's the artist um, that did all of these images. I hope I'm on camera there. 
good. So I wanted to put that in so that you would have the reference. And there's this cute little gnome here feeding, <laughs> unfortunately feeding a bee to a frog, but he's very, the frog is just so cute and appreciative. Um, a lot of the images are quite dark in the sense that there are a lot of dark colors. Um, but I, I found that to be very interesting. I really love this guy. He's, uh, this one here is a pocket. The background paper here is just some Tim Holtz paper. I'll just set this down so I don't make too much of a mess. Um, so this is a little tuck spot here and there will be something tucked in there, um, before he goes out into the world. Uh, this is a pocket that I had made using um, leftover book pages. So often when we're junk journaling, um, like, well, when I'm junk journaling, I buy books that are falling apart. And so the inner pages um, obviously need to come out. I use the covers and or recreate or rebuild the covers into journal covers. Um, and so that I'm left with all of these giant, <laughs> this giant stack of book pages. What do I do with them? I don't want to recycle them. I want to reuse them. So I've created this little pocket here. That was a lot of fun to do. So it has... A, pot, a little tuck spot here and a little tuck spot underneath here. And had I glued it accordingly, you, I could have done a little tuck spot here, but I wanted to give this page um, a little bit more heft and some visual interest. So there will be a little surprise tucked in there and some more things in here. And there's this great little moral mushroom. I think it's a moral uh, onto the side. And I just loved how those two colors sort of worked together. So turning the page over again, you can see the back of that little uh, tuck spot that I had made and I add, added some more mushrooms because gnomes and mushrooms go beautifully together. Amazon packaging, a nice little flip up here. Whoops. So I've just put tea stained paper on the back. Hopefully that's on screen or on camera. Um, so you could flip it up. You could add a picture, sketches, doodles a secret note, whatever you want. You can add a little flip out to that too. So you can create a flip out from your flip out, whatever you decide, whatever inspires you. And this is on a vintage dictionary page that I got from my friend Marjorie uh, from a book. She gave me a beautiful book uh, filled with these gorgeous pages that have illustrations in them too. I just love that. Some more children's writing paper, tea stain paper, some mushrooms. Now this is a great little page. It's from a, a, a series of vintage books called Childcraft. And it was essentially just books for kids that taught you how to do everything or taught you everything about life. And uh, it just so happened that there was this section on frogs and toads. And there was this little frog. I'll bring it up to the camera and hopefully you can see it. A little frog sitting under two toadstools. How perfect is that? And then there's another tree frog here. I just thought that was perfect. And then there's just a little information about frogs and toads. And here is a nice little corner tuck spot of a little gnome. I think he's painting or writing. I'm not sure. Maybe he's just reading. And I've done this little, uh, just a little mini notebook with some extra pages and pieces that I had left over. And again, love that crinkly sound of the Amazon packaging. And I've just stitched this little gnome image. He's playing the uh, French horn <laughs> under a toadstool, as you do. And there's some tea stained paper, some of that. Uh, th these are our tea stained scraps that I had, and I thought they would be just kind of fun to add in there. Just visual interest. And here, oh, I should say this, um, these papers, I believe are from, uh, these are vintage wallpapers and I'm 99.9% .9 sure this is one of the kits from Lorna Taylor from Taylor Made Journal. She has the most fantastic vintage um, wallpaper kits, just unbelievable. And I bought all of them. <laughs> I use them all the time. They're great for just backgrounds. Another little uh, gnome here, he's painting a frog who's posing on a toadstool. This is one of my favorite images. And inside is a little tag. Again, tea stained cardstock on the back. And there's some more of that vintage wallpaper and a nice little fussy cut mushroom. Another gnome flip up. He's blowing bubbles and there's a lovely little toad watching. I might have gotten a little too much glue. There we go. And they're just attached with tea stain paper flipping over the edge. So if you decided you wanted to cover that, you could, you know, come along with some washi tape and lay it across just to add some more decoration. Um, I've got cat fur on my washi tape. I guess that's the, that's what happens when you have furry critters. 
So something like this, you know, just coming along and adding just a bit of visual interest to kind of hide the, stru the structure, hide, create the magic and hide what's actually happening under there, right? So that actually looks really pretty. I'll just leave that there. But you could, you know, paint over it or add a whole other page, whatever you want. Uh, this is just a little t um, section of piece you'll see on the other side, but it's just a time card. This is just what's left that I use to bind it in and it's just creating a flip uh, in a few pages, I'll show you that. Um, some more beautiful red and white toadstools and just some tape that I've aged to look old. I'll have to glue this one down. I just tried not to glue it, but um, I think it needs some. When I added the, the stain on top of it to make it look old, I think some of it got underneath and so it's not quite as sticky. All the other ones I remembered to glue except for this piece. Another little pocket with a beautiful little tag tea stained on the back. Double pages here, some more of that cool um, wallpaper, some mushrooms on the dictionary page. Here's a little mushroom, this one I've definitely glued down, so there's some more of that really funky wallpaper and a little mushroom that I've, I've looked like it's just, you know, someone just harvested it and stuck it down to their page. This is some really cool um, stationary cardstock, actually. Um, it's not, I don't think it's really intended to be folded, but um, I just loved the beautiful flowers on that. So that's the center of the first signature. And I've left the strings long. Um, if you wanted to add little charms or glue little, you know, you could probably glue little mushroom, um, fussy cut mushrooms on either side of each other, you know, mirror cut them and stick them to the end, that would be cute, or putting a little charm, even something as cute, as simple as taking a paper clip. Let's see if I've got a paper clip here. Here. Oh, there's a safety pin. So even something as, as you know, mundane as a, a safety pin and just tying that to the end gives it a little bit of visual interest and a fun little dangle, right? Just hanging off there. I won't leave that there because I don't, the color doesn't really suit, but that's an idea, right? You can put little charms there. Some more little double flip pages here. Another tag and pocket. You can see the image is quite dark. Playing the banjo or the mandolin by the full moon. And here's that, uh, that tag, the uh, time card tag flip out. I've just put a little mushroom in there and it's got lots of space for writing on. You could add tea stain paper there if you wanted to. You could just write on this as it is, and then you can use it the back side as well. I love this image as well. It's like a, a, the, the little frog has gone to the gnome doctor and uh, the doctor's looking down his throat, almost as if he's just said, stick out your tongue, and his little tongue sticks out and he's looking inside his throat. It's so cute. And there's two more tags there both sewn with tea stained paper. I have some, you'll see some of things are sewn with black thread and some with gray thread. And that's honestly just simply because I ran out of black thread partway through the project. Here's a little gnome uh, backpacking. He's using this mushroom as an umbrella and it looks like he's got a snail attached to his back here, tied around his shoulder. And this is uh, just a flip out so you can add whatever you want there. Nice large journaling space. Same thing on this side. I'm trying really hard not to hit my stand here. Here's another flip. This one flips out to the side. Mushroom. This is uh, an envelope that I've tea stained and I've just cut the top so you can add things into, oh, I have some little things in there already. Um, you can just add some things into the top of the envelope here. And I've left this blank for journaling or, again, doodling images, pictures, whatever you'd like, and some more of that um, aged looking tape. There's another flip here. And there's another page from that children's book about frogs and toads. Another mushroom taped to the page. Morel there and there's a pocket this is sewn down as a pocket on the back and there will be something tucked away in there as well so that's the final page 
and so it closes up and the back again is just plain as you can see and again it can expand and there's lots of room for it to expand out and the I just have to sometimes you have to fuss with the cardboard a little bit to get it to go like mold into the shape that you want. So that, again, there's not as much exp uh, expansion room as the previous journal, but there is, um, there's lots of room in here. This is just a one signature journal. Uh, the other one was a two signature journal. So there's this one. And last but not least, I had an absolute blast making this one. This one I used images from I'm just trying to remember now. Um, usually I'm more prepared, but I just decided on a whim to do my filming today because I've been gone for so long. Uh, Pixie Dust Files. And I am completely obsessed with her digitals. I just found her. I shouldn't say I just found her. I found her a while ago and then I refound her again. And I obviously love working with um, wildlife, um, anything sort of foresty that all really inspires me. So I've, I've really loved her. I bought all of her wildlife kits or anything involving animals. Uh, so this one again, uh, cardboard, corrugated cardboard. Uh, it has three signatures in this one and loads of room to expand. Uh, some of the other digitals that I've used here are, um, again, the fussy cut mushrooms. I still don't remember wh where they're from. And some of these digitals are from uh, Took's craft table. Um, her, uh, what do you call that? Eco dyed paper, um, just for some background texture, which I really liked. This was, um, this is sort of more of a collage cover, which is a bit different for me. I don't normally do covers this way, but it just sort of happened this way. <laughs> Uh, so there's some of that really cool ribbon trim of the, the leaves, a little mushroom here. This is one of the mini, mini tag type things from the Pixie Dust kit, or one of her kits anyways. And this was a little pocket. I had a misprint and it only printed half the page, but I thought, you know what? This little pocket would fit perfectly on the front cover. And I've just put a wee little tag with a washi sticker on it and some little piece of trim that I happened to find on my uh, on my desk while I was working on this journal. And I just wrote on the back, this journal belongs to, and then obviously whoever owns it can put their name there or if you gift it to someone. Going in on the inside. Oh gosh, how much fun are these images? Love, love, love Pixie Dust Files. So here is a little pocket that I created out of um, one of the, I, I'm not sure what the intention was for these pieces, but I thought pocket right away or tuck spot or, you know, it could be a belly band as well. And I've just attached it with these great little brads to make it look like it's really stuck on there and tuck some tags in here. This one is from the kit and excuse me, I'm trying to do everything one handed. Just did uh, tea stained cardstock on the back there and a uh, shipping tag that I tea stained. I actually just took a tea bag and splotched it on. That's why it has all those really cool splotchy effects um, and with a mushroom and one of the little um, images from the kit. It says O is for owl and a mushroom long mushroom tag with tea stained paper on the back. Here is, uh, let me just find my, excuse me here. There we go. Um, a little owl pocket that I've stitched on and similar, I think, to the same mushroom that was here. Yeah, similar images and just a tag again with tea stained cardstock on the back. And this pocket is glued and stitched onto this little tea stained page here. Uh, page from a gardening book, how to set up your greenhouse. Here is a tea stain page that I just used uh, washi tape. Um, this is like a fern washi tape. And I had these brads that are uh, the shape of maple leaves. And because I'm in Canada, I thought it would be fun to include a little red maple leaf in there. Piece of the kit just stitched on as an extra little flap or tab to turn the page. Tea stain paper, these really cool doilies or table mats that I found. They're like doily table table setting type things or for you know cakes and such a uh, cute little pocket with a bunny rabbit and he's got his little paint palette and he's painting a mushroom and here's a cute little tag with a squirrel and a flower just tucked in there 
a lot of this technique I learned from a course that I took with Mrs. Coggs. It was a lot of fun. Different ways to sew on pockets and things. Book page, those beautiful red mushrooms. Some really funky trim that I found. It's like a burlap and yarn trim. And that's just stapled on. Here is a flip out. Um, this was a this is a time card, and I just added some. This was left over from when I was when I peel off the the parts of the top layer of the cardboard. I, I'm left with this really neat. It it does. It's probably hard to see on camera, but it, it does have a bit of that corrugated texture from where it's glued down. Uh, to the ridges so I like to include that and then I've just put a piece of vintage tablecloth over top just as a fabric flip and that flips out oh I love the sound of the paper and this is an image again from the kit that I've just stitched on so it's not a pocket or anything it's just there for interest but I have flipped over the page here I'll just take this guy here and if you wanted to if you had small little tags or a piece of paper that you wanted to tuck in you know, you could lay that there if you'd like. Everything also that's in the journal, um, that's in that are in particular pockets, don't have to remain where they where I've put them. You take them out and put them wherever you want, or use them for decoration however you like. Fun little mushroom image again from one of uh, Pixie Dust Files kits that I've just glued there. This is one of the tags that I've sewn on again, just as a little bit of visual interest and acting as a tab. Here's a pocket and one of the tags. I've taken one of the journaling cards and uh, sewn it onto the front of this brown pa packing paper uh, with a bit of cheesecloth for texture and created a little mini journal. It's a bunch of little pages. So they just tuck right in there. Boop, boop. And that gardening book here and Mr. Toad and a cute little tag with a, a the letter N, it says N is for nest and a nice little image of a nest and tea stained tag on the back and some eco dyed paper here. And this, I love the, the texture that the stitching gives on the back of the page. Here's a little flip up. Um, it's a little snail on mushrooms and it just flips up so you can have more journaling space. Uh, this was a scrap uh, piece of paper I had left from another digital so this isn't from any of the other kits I think it was from a Christmas kit honestly but it was there and I used it on the lined paper another pocket I just love this image as well he's wearing a little um uh, fabric over his back almost like a saddle I guess and here you wouldn't probably won't be able to see it on camera but it says the little fox taxi service and there's an owl and a bird taking a ride which is so cute they all look so happy B is for butterfly, nice little tea stained tag there, and mushrooms of course. And that's just blank on the back as well, those are tea stained. Gardening book, this is not a pocket, this is just a piece of Took's eco dyed paper that I just like to rip just to add texture and color. And you can still write over this as well, so that's kind of cool. Here's a little flip out, H is for home. And the little nest, which is so sweet. More tea stained paper. Here's the center of the first signature. I think there's, oh no, there's only, oh no, sorry, this is the center of the second signature. I forgot that we'd moved on. And a pocket with some, this is some of the, ooh, I'm not sure where this particular piece of paper is from. It will come to me eventually. Fun little pocket from the Pixie Dust Files. All these fun little tags this could be used as a belly band if you would like so a belly band would just mean you could put it across a piece of paper like so it actually looks really cool on this one too um, and glue it on either side and then it's open in the middle so that you can tuck things through like that so you could quite easily use this for that um, I've just put tea stained paper on the back so it makes it a little sturdier it would be excellent for that W is for wings, some little moths there, and this great little royal royal uh, chipmunk holding a nut. There they go. I like him peeking out there. Tea stained paper. Really cool effect on this particular piece. I honestly don't know how it happens. It's really just luck. Here is an envelope 
from the kit. And there are some goodies tucked away in there. I'll leave that as a surprise. And there's the back side of the envelope, just paper clipped in, some more of Tuck's eco dyed paper. This is another one of those fun little pockets or, you know, images like the bear at the front. Um, and I've just sewn it or attached it. I didn't sew it on this one because I didn't think I'd be able to manage it, but um, just glued it on here again, kind of intentionally intending to create just a, a tab to flip, uh, to grab onto, to easily turn the page. But then I decided to also turn it into a tuck spot. So there are these great little, little tags, mushroom and, oh, I hit the cam the camera again. I'm so sorry. And I um, just added some stitching across here. So it almost looks like the tab was sewn onto the card, even though this is technically part of the digital itself. I just wanted to give it a bit more texture and visual interest there pocket on the beginning of the first, sorry, the last signature. I'm having trouble with my first and last today. Gorgeous little owl. And again, some beautiful eco dyed paper, mushrooms, morals. I think those ones are morals and another little notebook that I just flung together. I think this one, I, yeah, I sewed this one down the back. So the signatures are secured uh, with the sewing machine. almost looks like a parsley leaf. I bet you it is. It's very pretty. Or a fern. And uh, here again, I've stitched uh, the paper over so there's a pocket. Uh, you can add some little things into that. You could decorate that if you wanted to. Write a little message. And it's sewn and glued so it's nice and secure. And some little mushrooms on the back. Here's a cute little deer tab or label. And this little sweet B is for bird. It's such a beautiful little bluebird image. I really like that. On this side of the page, again, one of the labels from Pixie Dust and some eco dyed paper from Took's craft table. Her, uh, her eco dyed paper really lends itself beautifully to all of the wildlife journals that I do. I just love, love working with them. F is for friends. So here's a deer and a bunny and just a plain old blank. Uh, mini um, label or tag rather and then here's a white tag that I've tea stained and this has a little squirrel I just did a mini collage there S is for squirrel here is a bunny playing the violin a plain white tea stained tag and plain tea stained shipping label here this is the middle of the third signature line paper tea stained paper a little collage I did with, again, one of the labels um, and one of the little tabs from Pixie Dust. Another folded over piece of paper. And on the last page, on the inside of the last page, is this adorable pocket here. And there's just a plain tag there. This says fancy goods and novelties tea stain paper. Again, this is one of those uh, pieces you could use as a belly band. It wouldn't obviously fit here. Belly band. Um, it's got tea stain paper on the back, so it's nice, nice and sturdy. So it would hold really well. It would also be really neat if you had, um, you know, a brad and you could pin it into the top of the page and, you know, swing it back and forth for fun. That's the final inside page. The back is just plain. And then I've just used some of that eco dyed paper again in this lovely, br bright, vibrant orange uh, just to cover the back here. And I've left the end of the flap open again. I think I said in the previous journal, I like to keep this um, free of any any kind of gluing or other paper so that it has the freedom to expand and contract as it needs to. There's the back right, and that's the cover flap. And there it is. There's the, the, the journal. I don't quite have a name for this one yet. Um, but I will, uh, I'll figure it out shortly. I'm going to have these all in my Etsy shop by the end of today, probably, which is, I don't even know what today is. It's Friday. Nope. It's Saturday, January. I'm not sure. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Probably like the 19th, I'm guessing. Um, anyway, so there are those three, my three journals, uh, using Amazon packaging. Fun, fun way to reuse cardboard, recycle, you know, reuse old papers, um, 
anything. I just, I love, I love these journals. They really do feel good in the hand. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'm sorry I was away so long. I will try not to stay away quite so long next time. Have a great day friends and happy creating. Bye now.